everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Today we are going to be doing a winners and a losers um, sort of review of the Springbok Rugby Championship squads, which was announced yesterday by Rassi Erasmus, uh, a traveling squad that will go to Australia. 33-man strong squad for the two tests, uh, the first taking place in, I think it's Brisbane, and then we move to uh, Perth um, for what's going to be a massive, massive weekend um, because... Not only are the Springboks taking on the Wallabies on that Saturday, but uh, Drickers Duke the Sea will be taking on Israel at Asanya in the same day in the same city. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty big. But uh, first game is in Brisbane on the 10th of August before we then move to Perth, uh, which will be on uh, the 17th of August. And uh, Australia is not a place we've had particularly good record at traveling so and this is why i'm very glad we've taken a strong squad because i want to win these two games in australia come back invite ellis i'm uh, sorry new zealand to ellis park you know the the home of staff can rugby really you know we've won world cups you know and yes we lost to the whole backs last time and it's not necessarily our biggest uh i'll stay with the best record but it's where we play our big tests you know whenever you know, you want to bring a, te a, a, a team to South Africa and make them feel uncomfortable, you take them to Ellis Park. Yes, the stadium might be a bit outdated, but it's a proper, proper rugby, um, you know, Coliseum type of thing. It's it's uh, highly ranked, lots of fans, a very intimidating atmosphere. And if we then bring New Zealand over here, we beat them in that first test, on the back of being Australia for those first two, that puts us in prime condition to potentially win the rugby championship. Let's look at the squad, shall we? And uh, we'll talk about the winners first of all, and then we'll talk a bit about the losers as well, and the players who um, are really sort of had their sort of Springbok career set back a little bit. Maybe not necessarily for some people um, that serious, but for others, maybe a bit more of a sign of things to come. That is the squad. Shout out to uh, Jared Wright, um, whose uh, um, graphic I have used over here. Check him out. Um, his Twitter link is, or X link is in the description. Very, very knowledgeable about rugby. Keeps you updated as well. Um, and uh, one of the friends of the channel. So uh, if you look at that squad, let's pick out a couple of winners, shall we? First of all, I'm going to look at uh, the hookers. Johan Kobola, back fit in the box squad, very much in the box mix as well. He will be on the, at least the bench um, for the first test against Australia, given the fact that Malcolm Marks will not be fit. So he will get another opportunity in the green and gold. If we look at the props, big winners in Thomas the Toy and Jan Hendrik Vessels, who are not the surprise selections, but the interesting ones. First of all, Thomas the Toy has leapfrogged, uh, leapfrogged um, uh, Trevor Nyakani, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but more importantly, for Jan Hendrik Vessels, the fact that he's been called up ahead of a Intertuko Tunu, for example, ahead of a Trevor, uh, shows you how highly rated he is by this box um, squad. I don't think we're going to see him necessarily play in these two tests against Australia, but this is about taking him to Australia. This is about taking him on a tour, getting more used to the Springbok environment, getting used to that touring environment. And this is the big thing that Rassi Rasmus talks about. Experienced players is not just playing minutes. It's about being part of a match day squad on, on the day and warming up, for example, helping with the preparation. It's about going on a tour and understanding how that works. How does a buck build up week work, for example? How does the recovery work? What are the expectations? How do the team meetings work? What are your expectations with regard to analysis? Your own prep, for example. It's about understanding the environment and how you need to act and how you need to behave and how you need to get yourself into that sort of right frame of mind when you're playing for the national side that for example is almost as important as the minutes you actually get on the field on saturday because it's about becoming part of the springbok culture um and then a massive massive winner in ruin nokia who was not even on the standby list came straight into the squad and will be going over to australia whether we'll see him i'm not entirely sure um but a, a big opportunity for him um to once again to get into that springbok environment train in front of the coaches um, and put himself on on that radar over there. Uh, other massive winner is Monet van den Berg, who maybe is benefiting from the injury to Faf de Klerk. But uh, I think, you know, as Zondela Stick said, he is the Faf de Klerk uh, replacement. That, that's what they view him as. And uh, very, very highly rated by Springbok management. And I think someone who's going to have a big opportunity to to put his name in the hat to play it. I, I reckon, I, my guess is by the end of the year, I reckon he's got four or five caps to his name. I think he plays against Argentina twice. I think he might even play against Australia once. And I think he'll play at least once or twice on the end of the year tour, uh, pending obviously injury and stuff like that. But I wouldn't be surprised if he does end the the the, the year with four or five caps to his name, because um, I think they really do rate him very very highly. Um, and then apart from that, you know, not too many other sort of surprises really in in the squad. Um, no surprises really in 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 the back three. Maybe um, a Apelifasi, for example, who 
um, is remaining in the squad. Uh, if you look at the injuries and suspensions, for example, that obviously, um, you know, that's that's a lot of those are the losers. So if we're talking about the big losers in the squad, um, massive, massive uh, setback for Edward van der Merwe. Not massive, because he's still going to play a lot of games for the box, I believe. But this week, he would have been primed, I think, to have played a big part in this rugby championship on the back of what was an incredible debut um, for him. I think a big loser is Jaden Hendrickson. And again, this is, not, this is something out of the control of these players who are injured. But um, I think at the moment, he's missing an opportunity to really sort of stay playing for the future number nine. And this is where Morning Vandenberg, for example, almost has a bit of an inside track to get himself into the mix because he can be there training with the box, uh, training with Tony Brown, for example. He wouldn't have seen the Jaden Hendrickson firsthand. And uh, I think that, you know, he is not, he's going to, um, I don't think it's going to necessarily be a massive detriment, but it is going to be slightly detrimental to his box career, the fact that he is injured at the moment at such an important time when they are planning for the future. Um, other big losers in the inverted commas is Evan Lewis, for example, who's dropped out of the squad completely, Alric Lowe. I um, actually should have mentioned him as a big winner, but um, Evan Lewis now being dropped out of the squad shows you how he's sort of down to probably about fourth choice, the eighth man, if we're being perfectly honest. Um, we wait to see what happens when Cameron Hanekom comes back as he sort of gets over his injury problems, which again is a little bit of a concern. But it does look like Quaker Smith um, and Alric Lowe, and Yasper Visa probably the top two options of the eight. Then all of a sudden, maybe Alric Lowe then you're looking at Aaron Ruiz, and Cameron Honeycomb could go into the top of that list, um, or even probably further up than Aaron Ruiz. So he's dropped down to sort of fifth choice. Um, work to do for Aaron Ruiz. The nice thing about it is that he, because he's been involved in the box setup for the last sort of month and a bit, he'll know exactly what it is he needs to work on. And going into next season, that'll be something he'll be speaking to John Dobson and the Stormers coaches saying, listen, I want to play many tests for the box. You need to help me get there. This is what I need to do. How can we do that in a Stormers shirt? So I think this is a massive learning curve. Um, for the likes of, of, of an Evan Lewis. Um, another big uh, 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 omission is Trayvon Yacani. And is this now sort of the start of phasing him out? He is somebody who's not getting any younger. Uh, I do think, you know, for example, um, if we were playing a World Cup final tomorrow, he'd probably be our third choice loose head. If, so if there was an injury to Vincent Cock, I think he would come in ahead of Thomas Satoy um, from an experience point of view. But 35 years old, he'll be 38 in the next World Cup this is probably the time where you'll start to be filtered out. And I think the selection is probably quite indicative of that. Um, if we get a couple of injuries, you know, for example, I don't think they'll have any issue going back to him from a short-term point of view, like against the All Blacks. But uh, what will be very interesting is to see if he makes the outgoing tour. Um, so I think that, for example, is, 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 is a big sort of sign with regards to maybe us moving um, away from him. Um, another big uh, potential loser is for me is under s He's been unbanned for, for four weeks, maybe three. You know, not a good time to be getting banned because this is the new World Cup cycle. He is very much a player that can still be involved come 2027. And he needs to make sure that every single opportunity he can get, he's available for. So I don't think he necessarily is going to miss games because of his suspensions. I don't think he would have played the first game against Australia. And he could very well be available for the next uh, game. But at the moment, you know, will not be part of the squad, as I understand, traveling over to Australia um, and uh, misses out on, on being on that radar and just being present. You know, that's the main thing. Being in that squad means you're on the radar. You means you're on the box mi ma management mind all the time. You're there, um, which is far better than being, you know, on the sidelines, back home, for example, kind of out of sight, out of mind situation. So those are kind of my winners and losers. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.